Welcome back to MLB Now, and we've tackled this a number of times. The subject is controversial. Major League Baseball is experimenting, going to be experimenting in the Atlantic League for the second half of the season, and will move the pitching distance back one foot to 61 feet, six inches, uh, right? For over a century, it's been 60 feet, six inches. Is it safe? Will it curb strikeouts? We have gone over this in depth on this program. Today, though, we speak to the expert in the field who has done the research. We welcome in Dr. Glenn Fleissig. He is the research director for the American Sports Medicine Institute, also injury research advisor for Major League Baseball and the president of the American Baseball Biomechanics Society. Dr. Fleissig, it's Brian Kenny. Welcome to the show. Brian, great to see you again. Uh, Glenn, great having you here and good to talk to you once again. Let's start through it. We've got time to go through this, and I know a lot of people are, have concerns about this. So tell us about the type of study that you did to see if one foot back would be that big of a difference. Well, okay, great. So what we did was a biomechanic study. It was sponsored by Major League Baseball. And uh, what we did was we took 26 pitchers and we had them pitch at 60 feet, six inches, which of course is the standard distance and 62 feet, six inches, and 63 feet, eight inches. And the reason that was chosen is if you uh, draw the diamond of the baseball, the baseball diamond uh, halfway between um, home and second base would be 63 feet, eight inches. So mm. those were the three distances that uh, us and Major League Baseball chose to study. So what we did was we did a, a biomechanical study where we put reflective markers all up and down the body of the pitchers and we randomized what order. We kept moving home plate, uh, here you see in our lab, we moved home plate back and forth so we could get the, the right distance. And, um, and we measured their kinematics and kinetics. And what those mean are we measured their motions and we also measured the forces on their elbow and shoulder uh, at those different distances. We also, had a, uh, we also have a pitch FX system in our lab. So we measured how long it took the ball to go and how much the ball broke. We just threw fastballs for this study. Mm -hmm. And uh, with, with all of that, we uh, looked at, again, at 60 feet, six inches, 62 feet, six inches, and 63 feet, eight inches. And we essentially found no differences in the mechanics of the pitchers, either, either their arm angles or things like that, or the forces on the elbow and shoulder. And that was really the most critical thing for us to find. We did find that the ball took longer to go the farther distance. You don't you don't really need a PhD in biomechanics to, to mm -hmm. figure that out, but that sure did happen. And also the horizontal and the vertical break of the fastballs were greater the farther the distance was. So in, in summary, our published paper and also our final report to Major League Baseball said most importantly, uh, moving the pitching mound back uh, a foot or two would not uh, increase the stresses on the throwing arm. That was the most important thing we found. And as far as performance goes, Brian, uh, we did find the batters would have more time, but the ball might break more. So it's kind of a mm. unknown. That's that's really where the field data comes in, the Atlantic lead stuff. But before that, you wanted to do a scientific lab study to prove it would be safe to even try it. All right. It, you know, it's interesting. What, what did the players say to you? The guys that these are college uh, pitchers that were throwing? Correct. What, these what are did college they, I'm pitchers. Just, yeah, I'm wondering, what did they say to you about how it felt or what did they change their action in any way? Right. You know, most importantly, we told them, well, okay, we told them just pitch full effort. We had a, a catcher, a real catcher. We moved the home plate back and forth. Funny thing is, we had them, um, we told them what they were doing in the study but we had them turn their back and they didn't see whether we were moving the home plate back or forth. So we didn't say, okay, this is the far distance. Right. But after a pitch or two, th they knew. But essentially, uh, college guys are very easygoing in general and uh, they really didn't have any trouble adjusting or, or frankly throwing a fastball, even uh, throwing a strike 63 feet, eight inches. Um, they seem to be okay with it. Wow. You know, we checked out what a foot looks like, a difference. We were in Studio 42 for MLB tonight after this announcement was made. We had Al Leiter out there and Dan Plesak. Those guys, you know, pitched in the major leagues, uh, you know, both of them combined for about 30 years. What surprised me was that how close it was. So you're saying what you found as well, like I, and I've been telling people this, like a foot seems like, I don't know if a pitcher would even notice it, but you're saying right. a pitcher doesn't even have to give it, even think of giving it a little more loft or a little more height so it comes down. There's even at no. 63 feet, eight inches? Correct, correct. Now, let me tell you, before we did this study, we actually did a study on youth baseball where we had them throw 46 feet, which is like the little league distance, 54 feet and 60 feet, six inches. 
And in that case, the kids, it made a big difference to the kids. And the reason we did that, as you know, kids, when they get to 12 or 13 years old, at some point they're throwing it on the small field. The next thing they know, they show up next year and they're on the big field. So we did a study of that. And there, uh, as the kids moved back, their velocity didn't change, but their mechanics and their forces on their shoulder in particular changed. Mm. So if you start messing around with changing the distance by like 10 feet, uh, like we did in that kid's experiment, then things happen. But changing it by a foot or two didn't seem to change the pitcher's uh, biomechanics at all. Glenn, what do you think the impact on velocity will be at the major league level? I don't think it'll affect velocity. It, I think it will affect batter's time, batter's reaction time. Again, uh, simple physics. If you're throwing it at 95 miles per hour a certain distance and you now you're throwing it one foot farther, the batter, of course, has a fraction of a second more. So I don't think it'll change the radar gun, but it, behind the scenes, it'll actually change the amount of reaction time the batters have. Or the effective velocity, the perceived velocity. There's Correct. different ways of, right, um, of the way it will come through. You also mentioned um, that the action of the pitches, right, the break, either way, the drop, that, that might be a little more severe because that's what pitchers have wicked action now on their pitches. Correct. What do you think that will do? Correct. And, and in our study, um, in our study, to keep it streamlined, we only did fastballs. And so the fastballs uh, had more horizontal and vertical break. And certainly the breaking pitches, the curveballs, et cetera, would have more horizontal and vertical break as well as you move farther back. So in my, in my guess, uh, Brian, is that if I were a pitcher and the distance was moving farther back, I would have a higher percentage of breaking pitches thrown and less of fastballs because the fastball the breaking pitchers would break more at the farther distance mm. and the fastballs would take would ha the batters would have a little more time. So I think we might see a shift in the approach of the batters and of the pitchers and the teams, but biomechanically, I don't think it's dangerous. Hmm. I'd say that's the trend that's happening now as it, as it turns out anyway. I would ask you this. What would you say, because this is what I hear all the time, that a uh, concern about injuries, that it's max velocity, max effort, you know, max velocity now. Everyone's trying to pop the mitt. Everybody's incentivized to do that at all levels. Um, what are your concerns about injuries if the mound is moved back one foot or two feet back? Right. So, uh, yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen in the psychology of pitchers and, and pitching coaches. But I'll, I'll tell you this. I think if the pitchers use the same approach, then uh, they don't try to change their mechanics. I think everything will be fine. I don't really think, honestly, a, a professional pitcher, a minor leaguer or major leaguer, is going to change his mechanics. He should be, at this point, trying to optimize his mechanics anyway. And moving it back a foot, I don't think he'll, he'll change his mechanics. We did an interesting study uh, maybe two or three years ago where we looked at professional professional pitchers, minor and major league pitchers we've tested in our biomechanics lab, who uh, when they come in here, we tell them, throw your fastballs at full effort. But when we retrospectively looked at our data, some guys varied their fastball velocity, not by instructions, they just happened to. Anyway, what we found out was the pitchers with the higher velocity in general have more force on the elbow and shoulder, but it's not every single guy. A guy with good mechanics actually doesn't have to have the highest force. But within every pitcher, if if I throw 10 fastballs or you do, or anyone throws 10 fastballs that vary, there was a definite correlation that my faster fastballs were more stressful. So the bottom line is this uh, this approach that you're saying, Brian, right now would throw everything at max effort this is maximizing the stress on pitchers. And honestly, a starting pitcher, I think, is better off from a safety and a performance point of view by uh, varying his fastball velocity within a, a certain range. And uh, it, it'll help his arm not have maximum stress or overload, but also it could help messing up the batters by having a velocity uh, variation. So I think regardless of moving the mound back or not, uh, the starting pitchers in particular have a better chance of safety and performance if they have a little variation in the speeds of their fastballs. Right. Whether, you can, inning, yeah, whether, whether the, you can sink yeah. that in at that level. Again, when you're when the kid's being, you know, incentivized at every level, pop that mid. He's throwing 95 yeah. and, and everything else. I just want to ask you one other thing. Um, 
any unintended consequences that you think might result? So let's say you went back 63, uh, eight inches, which is, is even farther. Right. Um, we, we, we're trying to curb strikeouts. We're trying to get the ball back in play, and these things should happen. We want them to happen. Anything you think we're not in, uh, thinking of right now that might happen as a result of moving the mound back or the pitching rubber back? Yeah, just thinking off the top of my head, um, one thing that's, that could work in the safety advantage is not only do the batters have more time, but the pitchers would have a fraction of more of time of a second to react against a line drive hit against them. So it might be a, little, a smaller safety uh, thing for pitchers. The other thing is if this does have the effect of increasing offense, increasing number of hits and everything, they, it might have a secondary effect of uh, more uh, overload on pitchers. If, if if there are more hits in the game, then maybe there'll be more pitches thrown in a game. Mm. And so um, I think we want more hits, but uh, it might, I don't know, it might have an effect where the pitch counts go higher if there are more batters getting on base. Right. Well, yeah, a lot of things could happen. And that's what, but um, so you're going to be watching this very closely, I guess, uh, <laughs> this, this year. Will you be out there, Dr. Fleissig, at all? Or what? how closely will you watch the Atlantic League? Right. So I'm not going to be there in person, but I am a, a consultant with Major League Baseball. I, I talk with um, some of the experts in the uh, commissioner's office uh, fairly regularly. Uh, and again, my advice, my role is to uh, find the science and, and tell how it will apply. So I'm in the loop, but I won't be there in person at the Atlantic League. OK, uh, yeah, we got to take a trip out there. We come out sometime. We'll get a hot dog. We can just watch, you know, and sometimes uh, John Heyman will be there. OK, <laughs> Dan O'Dan, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> we do that. You know, we can enjoy a game as well. And that but yeah. uh, good information. I'm glad we had the time to really get into this because I know people are concerned. It sounds like, wait, you can't move the mound, even though they used to move the mound uh, all the time. Dr. Fleissig, thank you so much. We'll do it again.